Hi everybody, Jill here. Welcome to my channel. We are having another Sunday vlog and it is going to be a little all over the place. We'll see how this goes. I just uploaded a lot of content from my phone. We went to Sephora again for the second time, took back something, never touched bases with you guys about the first sort of haul that we got. Technically I did, unbeknownst to you, I, I believe I recorded two, maybe three separate videos. The first time it was rather long. I was so upset. Uh, it was a pretty much a get ready with me full face. We used everything, a lot of, you know, sort of thoughts and whatnot. And my, when I went to edit and upload my files for the audio, there, there's the word gel, because I, I do them differently. I do them separately, I should say. So I have audio files that I need to get uh, into my editing software and the video file. And they were there, there were three of them, so they were there, but there was nothing on them. So I don't know what happened during the transfer, I don't know, I did press play, so I'm not sure what happened there. So that was next. It couldn't do a voiceover, it just wasn't that kind of video, it wouldn't have worked well. So the next day I did it again, I even wore the same clothes, thinking, you know, maybe I can use footage and intertwine it, sort of, you know, do that. Well, I it was a beautiful sunny day and I decided I'm going to put the blinds up and, and record, you know, in front of this natural light. Terrible idea. Washed with way too much. You couldn't. It was terrible. Didn't know exactly what it looked like. I need to reset up a monitor that I used to have so I can see really clearly what is going on but i only have the little side thing on my camera and it's I, I can't see that far away so because most of the time i'm not even wearing contacts when i'm in front of you nor my glasses so we have had a heck of a time trying to get a video really up here on my channel regarding this sephora stuff that i'm getting or that i got the Ilia i took back i ended up taking that back it just you know, I've come to the realization because I also tried the Sai on the second day that I recorded and it didn't work. My sort of conclusion when it comes to those kind of tinted moisturizer type light coverage SPF sort of things, because there is SPF in them, they're not for me and my 56 year old skin. While I don't really use heavy even heavy medium-ish foundations on my skin. I don't mind my pigmentation and modelness coming through. It really sort of, it was the weirdest thing. It wasn't awful. It's not like I hated the product as a whole. It just did not work for me and my skin. Um, it, it kind of like the pigmentation that it had in it sort of sat behind my pigmentation on my skin you know, AKA sun damage. And it sort of brought that forward. So I looked even more modeled under my blush. I just didn't like it at all. As for that SPF, you know, that's not why I wanted to try those products out. That's really not why I wanted to try those products. I was trying for this luminosity, this natural pretty glow, let my skin look pretty underneath my makeup. No, that is not what happened there. If I want sun protection, and have a little bit of that going on. This is what I use. This is the Color Science Face Shield. It does have a little bit of a tint to it, and it really sort of, it does kind of mute things out on the days when I will just wear this, a little bit of cream blush, a little yada yada, and I feel like I look better than if I were just completely bare-faced, because I'll, I'll use some concealer, but it's a very quick sort of natural thing. This works great. Like this, much better than either the Ilia or the Sai type of product. All right, so one of the things actually that I did get on my second trip is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. I'm very on the fence with this. I have worn this now several times all day. I'm not sure. It's not one of those things that I am loving. Maybe it'll grow on me and you know, I don't know. So I'm not sure. It, it tends to make my skin look a little too matte, even, I don't, 
I'm trying to deal with that because it's a finish that I'm not used to. So yeah, I, I am kind of on the fence with that. I also got the Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealer, which ended up being a little too light for me. It's this one here. And normally I get pretty good luck when it comes to picking out concealer because I tend to get probably the lightest one they offer. But this time the shade was quite light and it didn't uh, work for me as well. I can get away with using it fine. Uh, I don't feel like I have to take it back, but I didn't use it today because I have the base on and I have my concealer and that's all so far. I am still, I'm on the fence about this one as well. And it could be because it's hard when the color isn't exactly right. Anyway, so what I have on my eyes right now is another product that I'm a little on the fence about. And that is the True Match by L'Oreal. This is that concealer. Go ahead, camera. And it's in the color W1-2. I sort of put it directly on my little guy here and just kind of pounced it in. And that's where we are right now. Oh, no, that is not. But I found this trio on my lips that I really love. And I'm using the L'Oreal Matte Lip Liner in Matte's It. Then I go in with my Tom Ford Vanille, Nude Vanille. And then, then I top it off with my new Bare Minerals sort of balm lip gloss. I really like these. I got the first time we went to Sephora, I got this color and I also got, which I believe this is called Serenity. And then I got Trust. Do I still have that one out? Yes. Beautiful, very sheer. They, they make wonderful lip stick toppers. You can put them on bare lips as well. In last week's vlog, I do try these out for you guys. The other product actually that I got the second time is a little sample, so cute. The cutest little version of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish. This is a pressed setting powder. It is just slightly pigmented. <clears throat> this is in the color light. I haven't set my face with a setting powder in a very long time. So I am just not used to that look anymore. However, I know it would be best if I would set my makeup because it would of course last longer, but I just don't like the finish. So I have used this and I just, it to me, it's, it's no different than the other finishing powders that I tend to stay away from. You know, it just accentuates any dehydration lines that I might have and just my other larger lines. So I'm, I'm not real fond of this, even though this was a smaller size, which I highly recommend if you have that opportunity to do that with just about any product. I still want to say this was like $23 or something like that. But yeah, uh, and I did set my concealer with this and that was like a big no. So I am just not gonna set anything today again. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little contouring though. I feel like that needs to happen today, even though I'm just gonna be at home. I just like doing it. This is a BK Beauty brush. These are gorgeous. This line is probably some of the softest brushes I have ever used. It doesn't matter which one I choose, where I use it. They are truly some of the softest brushes I have ever used. They feel good. They're, they're really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put these down in the description box. This is number 101. It is dense, very soft, slightly angled. I don't really necessarily pay attention to how they are supposed to be used. I use them the way I want to use them. And if they look like they're going to do well for what I need it for, I just grab it and do that. So I've got Beach Please here. It's matte. Great color to contour with if you're very fair, like I am. So why do we contour? This is not going to, this wasn't supposed to be a tutorial, but I just have to say, 
I get people saying, so why do you bother contouring? You know, our face has natural hollows and the, and then the light naturally falls in them. But when we use foundation, those just sort of go away. So think of it as drawing just a flat, basic face on a piece of paper until you shadow it or contour it. It's going to look very 2D. But when you start contouring and shadowing, the light starts dropping in there and it jumps out off the page. It's kind of the same thing. You know, I know we're 3D, okay? But it's it's kind of, if you think about it that way, that's what we're doing. We're just putting back the hollows that we kind of took away with our foundation. So we're just, we're adding depth to our look. Adding back those hollows. Could even add hollows where you want them if you don't naturally have one there. take this and just kind of soften that all right I'm going to do my my makeup off camera this time and then I'm going to touch base with you about the other things that I purchased the second time we went to Sephora so I will be back with you guys very soon all right off we go to Sephora again uh, here we go Jill, you're just really going at it. Too fast there. Don't want to hit the trash can. Oh, did I mention? Did I may have mentioned, but I, I figured out that this mount does indeed go horizontal. <laughs> it's great. I kind of was confused why I couldn't get it to do that. I thought that's so weird. I mean, most car mounts, you know, you can do that you can twist them so your your phone will go horizontal uh so I, I figured out sure enough this this one does do that it took a lot it was too tight i had to figure out what to loosen to make it happen but i did so hallelujah for that yay i didn't want to have to buy anything else this is a, a nice car mount and the thing is is i just bought it maybe a month ago so yes those of you that are wig wearers i went in there three days ago if the same people are working that were working then and they remember me at all which chances are they don't but if they do they're gonna see me in a completely different wig completely different style I think what what did I have on I had Caliente last time when we went in so same color same bell dress actually this is not Caliente at all right definitely not caliente it's a lot longer but it's like I don't care I don't care they're gonna know that I wear wigs so what and with that said though you guys I do have days when I do care and I'm a little less secure I'm a little insecure that day or whatever the reason I'm not feeling it and so I will care sometimes and either I decide oh god I can't go in it's so stupid don't let your brain do that to you but it does happen from time to time or if I know I'm going to some place I will like put something very similar on and that's okay too that's okay if you have times like that or if that's just how you do it but I like more freedom so I get frustrated with myself when I'm like that I definitely think wigs bring me joy because I have the freedom to change it up whenever I want. So I get frustrated when I do get like that. Okay, I actually decided to come to Target first because it was a bit on the way since I went a different way. Uh, so I parked out here in front of Target. It's raining pretty good out there. So I'm um, gonna do a little browse through at Target. Can't not do that when you go into Target. I still prefer home goods, but <laughs> So yeah, I need to get baby aspirin. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I know my husband has a small wish list of things that he wants and it's a grocery store type of list. And I hate, 
hate going to a grocery store. So I'll, I'll try to get it here, I think, at Target. And two birds with one stone is always a good plan. And you know what? Actually, I did not know this, but over there, um, they moved Ulta, because we haven't lived here in two years, but they moved Ulta over here. So I might go into Ulta while I'm over here. And maybe then I'll just run in and run out at Sephora to exchange that if I find what I'm looking for over here in Ulta, because I'm actually not sure I'm thinking now, and I don't think Ulta carries the brand or two brands that I'm kind of looking at with those eyeshadow palettes. Okay, I'm going to head in to, uh, to, to Target, and I will be back shortly. I went in for baby aspirin and came out with much more. I'm gonna run over any civilians. Well, okay. Well, I, even the Ulta, I can see it. I mean, it's right there. I think I'm just going, which way am I going this way? I'm going toward Ulta. In my head though, I'm thinking I'm not gonna go to Ulta on the turn uh, because I think what I want is at Sephora. I'm not sure Ulta carries this specific brand. I don't know why I'm keeping it from you right now. I don't know. So I'm just going to go to Sephora. It's just right over there as well. It's good to know I know where Ulta is now. That's a little scary. Okay, let's go and return this here thing and I will be back with you guys. All right, we are with a few more things. <laughs> I will show you what those are when we get home. Anywho, you will see it. I'm pretty excited about that. There are, I hope, hmm, well, I'm just gonna tell you about it when when I actually, God, I feel like my, my hair is choking me. It's all wrapped around my neck. I have no idea what it's doing back here. It's tucked into my coat. It probably looks horrific back there. Anyway, I felt very glam in this. I felt a little too glam, I think, to be honest. But whatever, you gotta rock it when you have it on. And I felt like I, you know, just walked around like I owned it. That's what you gotta do. Cause I do own it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Oh, you guys, everything that you feel like you're the only one probably that's struggling with it if you are, you know, into the helper hair situation. I'm here to tell you, you're not. I totally do the, all the stuff you think that you're the only one that struggles with. And you're like, what am I doing wrong? You know, why is it, why does it seem like nobody's having a problem with their wig in this way? I can guarantee you. I do at least. I would say we all do, but I don't, I don't know. But if you are a high anxiety person, I'm sure you're struggling a little more than someone who isn't. And I am a high anxiety person. You know, I'm, I am too. Therefore my days do vary. And oh well, you know, I just alter my if I struggle a little and, or if I have a day where I don't feel like dealing with any hair, however, I've chopped my hair off. So I do feel I have to go out now, no matter what, with something on my head. Well, guys, we made another day of it. We did another trip here and almost went to Ulta. That, that would have been not good because I may have purchased something there and what I purchased at Sephora. So good thing we held back on that. Uh, yes, that was a good decision. Oh, uh, I did get one beige bra that I showed you and one gray bra. 
I got extra large because I noticed their cup sizes only go to C. And I have lost weight, so I'm hoping the extra large will fit me. I don't like things to be really tight around, even though that can kind of help push you up a little bit around you. But I hate that feeling. So I got an extra large hoping it would compensate for everything. I hope they fit because they look so comfortable. There's no clasp in the back, which I love. I'm wearing a sort of sports bra situation now, only it does have a little support. There's no wire, but it does have the clasping, you know, it's got three claspy things in the back and man, it just, I, I can feel it back there all day. And so this doesn't, so man, I am so hoping that these bras work. They feel so soft. There's no seams and you know how I'm all about no seams in my socks, no seams in my underwear, no seams in my bra, and the bra thing has stumped me my whole life and I have yet to find a bra that I can honestly say is comfortable. I've given up the wire, so the lift isn't quite what it used to be, but the thing about sports bras is they make you, there's no separation really, so you look like you just have this roll. I'm not liking that look. This one I'm wearing today isn't so bad but there's others that I wouldn't wear out in public. I'll wear them at home, but I won't wear them in public. Um, so I saw those. I have no idea actually how much they were. I should look on the, on the receipt because I could not find a price tag on that entire display or on them at all. So now, did I throw the receipt in here? We're at, we're at a red light. Oh, now it's green. Uh, oh, they were only $16 a piece. Well, good Lord. Honestly, if they don't fit, I won't feel quite so bad. So, another thing about being a wig wearer that's pretty awesome. It's raining. I didn't really put my hood on, you know, to go to the inside because it wasn't pouring rain. And you get a little rain on these, you're okay. It's fine. They don't, it doesn't ruin them. Your hair still looks good. As a matter of fact, sometimes the rain will revive them a little bit. You know, and so you don't have to worry about that hair that you struggled making look good for God knows how long before you head out the door. You get a little sprinkle on them and it's thrashed. At least that's what happened to me. So, heck yeah. Go ahead, man. Give me some rain. I still, my hair's looking great. Okay, we're almost home, so I am gonna let you go and we'll, next time you see me, I will be uh, showing you what it is that I got at Sephora. I'm very excited about it. Holy cow. I have wigs all around me right now, on the floor, just a mess. I had one of those times when I couldn't, nothing, I hated everything I put on my head. So this this one here that I settled on is Pretty Please by Raquel Welch in the color. I want to say that it's shaded cappuccino. Yes. It's just on the floor, on the floor right here. Pretty Please in S. Oh, no, this is shaded biscuit. Okay, it didn't look as light to me to be shaded biscuit for some reason. So I'm going to go through kind of these things that I bought. And, and what I did here. So on my eyes today, I did the Makeup Geek, which I, I did a couple little extra things out of my new palette here, which I want to touch base with you. This is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. So I've never, ever tried Natasha Denona anything. Always wanted to try the a palette. So I bit the bullet and got this one. I almost got the Glam one. Instead, I got this. These are in the 60s, so I want to say this was 63, 65, somewhere in there. Never, ever have I paid that much for a palette before. I usually stick around 50, 49, 45, somewhere in there. However, you get a lot here. You get a lot of shadow, quite a color story going on. So, you know, a lot of palettes you'll just get, say, this much, you know, barring a row. You get 
three rows really, and you get a lot. So if you think, okay, 45 plus this, you know, then, you, then you're in the 60s. So I get that. My favorite eyeshadows are Anastasia of Beverly Hills or Anastasia Beverly Hills. I love those eyeshadows. They are fairly consistent from palette to palette. There have been exceptions. However, I love the Soft Glam. I love the Sultry palette. Those are my two very favorite palettes, pretty much of all time, I wanna say. They're gorgeous shadows, and I never understood the hoopla about these you know, upper end shadows until I tried them. And me being somebody who loves to play with makeup, you know, it, it, there was a difference for sure. The, the payoff, the ease of blending, they're buttery, they, they are on your eyes what they show in, you know, in the actual palette. They, they're not excessively powdery to where you see the pigment, you get it on and it's just not quite there or they have great payoff and as you blend it, it sort of starts blending away. That has happened too, even with higher end shadows. So I just love them. And, and specifically those two palettes, they're my favorite. So I felt like I had a pretty good gauge as to how I would feel about this Natasha Denona business. So I have used this several times. I have in one look because I was so excited, I tried like nine different ones and then the next time I used it, I used some of those and ones that I hadn't used yet. I pretty much have used almost all of the shadows in this palette. My overall feeling about it is, is that I do not feel they wowed me to the point where it was like, holy cow, these are the best eyeshadows I have ever used. No, that didn't happen. Did I feel like it even is better than my favorite Anastasia palettes. No, I definitely don't. I still feel like those were a little better than these. And the these are very pigmented, very much the same as the Anastasia. This is probably my favorite color in this palette. It is again, sort of shimmery, uh, very, very, very pretty. So yes, the payoff is good. So you're gonna wanna go in light and build with something like this. Same with your Anastasia or Anastasia palettes that I talked about. So pigmented that you can make a mess because you're gonna blend it and it's gonna blend out for you. And you know, so you've gotta start with, you know, not going crazy in the beginning or as you blend, it's just gonna turn and just turn into just this muddy mess if you're blending other colors and, all of that. So there's kind of a learning curve with these types of shadows. Same with this palette. You want to go in light and build, but it's not quite as buildable as those two Anastasia palettes that I mentioned. So easy to get a soft look with, with this palette. Very easy because it does blend so, so well. So, you know, you have that sort of butteriness that, that you get. But so then, it, you know, I start out with not a lot, but I, you know, I start with my packing like I do and tapping and then I'm blending beautiful, but it's like, mm, it blended away some of that intensity that I want. I'll go in and do that. And it's like, yes, I love it. And then I'm just blending and I'll just, you know, take, take something like this and just kind of soften the edges. And it's like, hmm. So I find myself going back and back when I really want to have a rich, color go on which is usually you know on the outer skirts you know of my eyes i found that to be a little bit of an issue whereas with my anastasia it's not an issue at all it's not i'm, I'm being very picky because it's a 60 freaking five dollar palette so yeah i am being picky do i feel like you have to invest in this particular high-end palette in order to maybe have your first experience with a higher end no i absolutely do not I think there are a lot of higher end palettes in the $40 range that are going to equally be as nice as this palette is. I think what is part of the investment with any palette is the color story. That color story, you know, you're looking at high end palettes, palettes, they're all kind of equally the same when it comes to the type of shadow you're getting. Then it comes down to the color story. Is there, 
you know, a color story that wows you that, wow, I don't have a lot of those colors. I'm loving this. Then it's worth the push to get maybe another $10, $12 to invest in a beautiful color story. That's where I feel something like this, you know, sort of comes into play with me. It's like, I do love this color story. I think it's gorgeous. I don't have a lot of the same colors. So yes, I think it was very well thought out of, thought out. I think you've got your mats, you've got your satins, and then you've got your, you know, the a little bit bumping it up there. So it is a beautiful palette in that way. It absolutely is. So it's really about your budget. It's, and of course the palette itself. I mean, it's simple, but I still really like, I really like them. This is something that's easy to keep clean. You know, it's a nice size where it will store nicely. So the, the palette itself also plays a part for me. If it's a real pretty packaged palette, feels good that is something that I look for too because I like nice packaging and if I'm paying 60 plus I want it all so yeah I'm, I'm not disappointed in that I think this is simple clean and I really like it I like the idea of you know they're all kind of the same so you have this collection will I never get another Natasha Denona no no that that's not what I'm saying I have my eye on a, on a couple of her other palettes now too, but now I know it's like, is this an exceptional, like, did it completely wow me when it comes to the eyeshadow itself? No, but it is a, a very nice eyeshadow. It's, it's definitely a notch up when it comes to, you know, some other palettes, some other shadow brands, you are getting a beautiful formula in this and I can only speak for this palette. I'm not sure if they differ from palette to palette with hers, but with this palette, you are getting beautifully formulated, long lasting, easy to blend, highly pigmented shadows for sure. So I wanted to touch base with you guys on that. On my cheeks today, I reached for the L'Oreal Infallible. What color do we have here? Number 45 is the color. And uh, this is beautiful. So that's the flush of color that I have on my cheeks today. Really loving that. I did definitely do a little highlight with my favorite buxom today. Haven't used this in a while. Uh, so on the fence here with this, not sure yet with the Forever uh, Makeup Forever uh, Jill foundation. Didn't use this one today as mentioned earlier. A little too light. I don't know yet. I can't say either way. I'm going to have to use this a little more to touch base. And, and if it is just, I think, a fabulous choice for a mature eye tissue. No, the Flawless Finish Pressed Powder by Charlotte Tilbury did not wow me at all. So I I put a little bit of this on my nose. It's, it's not, it's, it's a nice finishing powder. It's just me not into them right now so i won't be buying a bigger one of this when i run out which i'm thinking it's gonna last me a while i got the palette i got the makeup forever stuff and i got the little pressed powder and i think that's it that's the second visit what i walked out with once i returned my Ilia. the first one again love the glosses uh as for the now what did i do with that so i did get the laura mercier this is the celestial light Yes, I do like this. However, something that I did say in that one video that never made it out to the world. <laughs> a little goes a long way with this. This is a finishing powder. I am all about finishing powders. I love them. I absolutely adore the radiances and the mineral, uh, bare minerals line. I love my peach blur. I love all of those kinds of, of finishing powders. This one, and I go crazy with them. I just you know they're all over and boom i'm loving what i have did that with this one can't really do that this one will take it up um, a lot more notches than what i'm used to it's also i must say not as finely milled as what i'm used to so it can definitely draw attention to those sort of dehydration lines that you get so go light i do think it's gorgeous i do think it's quite pretty but I've noticed I can't apply it like I'm used to with my other finishing powders. 
but it is very, very pretty. It's quite nice because I love the sort of finish and glow that you get with this. And it's not like that glow is what is over the top. It's more what it does to the finish of the look that can get over the top because this gives you a beautiful, pretty, tasteful sort of end look when it comes to the glow. It's just that extra, it's the finish, funny enough, even though this is a finishing powder that can get over the top. And then it starts looking almost, for lack of a better word, a little grainy. Is That might be a little bit too much of a word to attach to that. But I do really, I'm not taking this back. I do like it. Hard to miss with me with a finishing powder. <laughs> And uh, I think they're sort of that little trick, the little thing up the sleeve, if you have mature skin, to really use a finishing powder. I still love the Radiances better. They're gorgeous. They're my first choice. I love the Clear Radiance, the Flawless Radiance in the Bare Minerals line. Oh, beautiful. I would say my second go-to is always my Peach Blur when I want sort of a warm under tone like a flush of warmth without it being over the top that is gorgeous i hope they still make that i've had that for quite a long time but i think we're going to go ahead and end this one finally one thing about vlogs it's like i you can go on and on and on but i hope you enjoyed it thank you so much and i will see you guys very soon in the next video bye bye I swore